John chapter 10, verses 10 through 14. It says here, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Now, a pastor that is Christ-like will be known by the Bible-believing brethren. They'll say, hey, yeah, that's brother so-and-so. You know, yeah, his good stuff's pretty good. You know, and I know a lot of the brethren recommend my ministry and the preaching that I do, and I appreciate that. I really do. Am I perfect like Jesus Christ? No, I'm not perfect. I'm not infallibility, or I'm not infallible. I don't have papal infallibility, okay? I was getting ahead of myself there. But the point is, you know, I put out some good videos, you know, and I'm not bragging. I'm not, you know, I'm speaking foolishly here as Paul had to do. Why? Because there's so many people that are coming out now saying, oh, Denlinger's this and that, you know, attacking me. And so what I'm saying is, hey, the Lord has blessed this ministry, and I know many people write me and say how much they've been blessed by this ministry. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for that. If you hear things that I'm wrong in, that you disagree with, you know, don't write me off as some kind of a heretic and whatever else. You know, say, hey, agree to disagree on this point. Whatever. We're going to see about that in a little bit here. I'm going to talk more about that, the thing of judging among brethren. But notice there that the pastors, the hirelings there, they flee when they see the wolf coming. What is a wolf? The false prophet. See? And so you see, a lot of times, these men that are hirelings, they'll never warn people about false ministries. That's not what I do, okay? I will warn you. I will warn about false prophets out there. You know, and I, I just trust a lot of times that a lot of people have enough sense to, to see the false prophets like Benny Hinn or or Joel Osteen, or Rick Warren, or people like that, Billy Graham, you know, those guys are obvious false prophets. But then you have some that aren't quite as obvious, like Stephen Anderson, Martin Richling, you know, some of these other guys like that, Paul Begley, you know, some of these guys, they're not quite as obvious false prophets as your Kenneth Copelands and the other guys like I mentioned, all right? I'm going to expose some of that. Now, is my whole ministry going to be exposing and judging these false prophets? No, I'd never get much done for the Lord. But occasionally, there are going to be times when I need to expose that false prophet and show you not just that I'm attacking them personally, you know, just, just them pointing at them, but I'm showing this is why they're wrong so that you'll spot that in other false prophets in the future. Okay, that's what this ministry is about. I, yes, I do preach the word. Yes, I do try to feed the flock of God. But part of my feeding of the flock of God is to take care of you and to warn you about false prophets. And, you know, let me just say this, too. If you see people that are teaching things that are contrary to the things that you have learned and been assured of, don't watch them. Okay, you get some guy using new versions, shut it off. Watch another video. You say, but it was really interesting. I don't care. Shut it off. The Spirit of God is not leading somebody to use the NIV. Turn it off. All right? Let's go back, or let's look here at verse 20. Excuse me, we're going to read John chapter 10, verse 20 and 21. And here again, I just wanted to throw this thing in here because you will see this in the comments. You will see this about me. I just thought this was interesting. And, and I'm saying this about myself to try and encourage you if you're in ministry because it's going to be said about you as well. And I know many of the brethren have already told me and testified that this thing has been put on them. Look at this. John chapter 10, verse 20. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, Though These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And if you saw my study on the thing of opening of the eyes and, and devil possession and things, you know that the Bible does talk about people having their eyes opened to truth. Now, if your eyes have been opened to the truth through a King James Bible-believing ministry, 
then that doesn't that means that I don't have a devil. Okay, these people, oh, Brian Denlinger's lost. He's a, he's a devil possessed. He's a lunatic. He's crazy. He's mad. Um, can somebody that's like that open the eyes of the blind? You know, and I don't mean physically open opening a blind person's eyes. I'm talking spiritually here. You say, yes, I do believe that you are devil possessed, and, and even though that you've done some good sermons, okay, then go someplace else. Don't waste your time watching my videos then. Just amazing. But that will be put on you. Okay? And again, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, the stories that I've heard and things from, from brethren over the last, you know, six years now, just about six, well, over six years, you know, I was, I haven't been on YouTube quite that long, but I was in ministry before being on YouTube. And it's just like the, the correspondence I have with people all over the world and I get this thing all the time. And my family thinks I'm crazy. They think I'm possessed. They think I'm nuts. That I'm losing my mind and whatever else. They did it to Jesus. They're going to do it to you. Just get ready for it. If it hasn't happened yet, it will happen in the future. If it has happened, it's going to continue happening. <laughs> okay? Just by word of encouragement. But isn't it going to be nice when you actually get to see Jesus Christ someday to be able to have had something in common with him? For him to be able to say, uh, I saw what those people called you. They did the same thing to me. What an honor. But let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah 23, verse 16. Jeremiah is one of the most interesting books, I think, in the Old Testament in terms of God's judgment coming upon a nation that has turned its back on him and on his word. Uh, it's just amazing the parallels between uh, ancient Israel and modern-day America. Okay, it's just incredible. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16 through verse 32. There's a bunch of good things in here. Let's look at these. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. That's, again, why I'm warning people. Is the same reason that Jeremiah warned people. He's saying, don't listen to people like this. I tell you, don't listen to Paul Bigley. Don't listen to Kenneth Copeland. Don't listen to Martin Richling. Don't listen to Stephen Anderson. These people are false. They're false prophets. Stephen Anderson's telling you that the rapture's not going to happen. Right? He's telling you, there is no rapture until halfway through the thing and, you know, whatever else. I mean, I've debunked that guy over and over again. But uh, verse 17, They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Sure. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word, who hath marked his word... And heard it. Do you mark things in the Bible? That's one of the reasons I do that thing because there's so much in there. I just I look at it and I go, "Wow, it's exactly what the what's going on today, man." It just says it right there, just like, "Wow." You know. And again, they they think you're odd for doing that. A lot of people, you know. I mean, I saw this one video of Martin Richling, and he's like, "Well, the guy has his Bible all marked up. What kind of weirdo is he?" Well, I uh, follow the scriptures right there. I mark the Word of God. And of course, I know it doesn't mean, you know, necessarily collaring things and whatever, marking the verses. It means, you know, putting the thing in your mind saying, yeah, that's absolute truth right there. I understand that. But it, when you're studying the Bible and you're, you're marking these verses and saying, boy, that applies to this and that applies to that and whatever else, you'll do good with your walk with the Lord. Verse 19. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Oh boy, what a prophecy. In the latter days in which we are living, you can consider the counsel of God, the word of God, you can consider it perfectly. 
but how much more so will it be true for those Jews that go into the time of Jacob's trouble? And that right now they look at the New Testament and they say, uh, it's a bunch of lies, a bunch of Gentiles put the thing, uh, it's just ridiculous, heresy, blah, blah, blah. They'll consider it perfectly. They're going to be reading Revelation to see what comes next. Especially when Moses and Elijah are here, the two witnesses of Revelation there, they're going to be here proclaiming that to them. Preaching the New Testament. What would that be something? Verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Hmm. Am I not a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Watch my video on dreams and near-death experiences for that whole thing. You know, this thing of, I was, I was in this dream and I died and I went to heaven. I had a guy contact me recently. It was kind of funny. And he said, he said that he had died clinically dead in the hospital, dead there. And he was brought back, came back. And he said, you know what I saw? Nothing. <laughs> he was telling the truth. These people, I died. I was dead for 24 hours and I saw this amazing, amazing vision and God brought me back to life so I could tell it to all of you. And then they tell you the vision and it's not what the Bible teaches. Yeah. A bunch of liars. Verse 26, How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. They're after your money. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. What is modern-day Catholicism? It's Baal worship. Hmm. You know, it says back there in the book of Psalms that he has magnified his word above his name. Hmm. They forget his name and they worship Baal. Not much changes. Verse 28, the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? In other words, don't be worried about these lost people, the chaff there, you know. What is that to the people that are saved, the wheat? Verse 29, is not my word like a fire, like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? That's why people don't like to be judged See, just this thing burns them up, you know, and smacks them over the head. They say, oh, you're a Bible thumper. You're one of those Bible thumpers. You're judging people. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Verse 30, therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. That's another reason to rebuke these false prophets. Because they're coming out and they're saying, Well, you know, God gave me this vision, and oh, it was so beautiful and so wonderful, and we just needed this and we needed that. They're turning people away from the Bible. You know, a true ministry will turn people to the Word of God, not away from it. And when they go and they're talking with their neighbor and saying, I watched this video. Did you see the video about that guy that died and he was dead for 48 hours and he saw this vision and he was in heaven and blah, blah, blah? Oh, no, I didn't see that, but I can read my Bible. And I know that the Bible says, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So uh, the Bible debunks your lying false prophet and his dream. That's usually when you get the, who are you to judge? <laughs> yeah. Just amazing. Next, go to Lamentations chapter 2. Next book over. Little book right in between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. 
Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. It says here, Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity, to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. There's another good one. What are these false prophets trying to do? They have seen vain and foolish things for thee. That's what they do with their dreams and their visions and everything else that they see. But look at this. They have not discovered thine iniquity. You know what? One of the false prophets, one of the big things that they won't do, they won't judge your sins. They are afraid to offend you because then they can't get that money. So they'll say, let's not be harsh on the Catholics. And, and you know, if you're, if you're using a new version, I'm okay with that. I mean, if you can't understand the King James, and I'm all right with that. And I mean, if you, okay, if you listen to some rock music and if you watch TV and, you know, smoke pot and, and do drugs and, 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 you know, kill babies and eat them, you know, while they're still alive and whatever it is, I'm not against it, you know. And of course, I'm exaggerating there towards the end, but my point is they don't discover the iniquity of their viewers. They aren't willing to come out and ruffle some feathers, you know. See, I'm not going to be that way. I will offend you at some point in time. It's just the way it's going to be. Why? To turn away thy captivity. Do you know the Bible talks about when you get in sin, that you are in the snare of the devil? You know what pornography addiction is? It's a snare of the devil. You know what drunkenness is? Snare of the devil. You know what gluttony is? snare of the devil. You know what television is? Snare of the devil. You see, that's why I rebuke these things. I discover your iniquity. A lot of times people, you know, I discover your iniquity because the Lord speaks through me and they say, you're attacking me personally. You must have heard, you know, something or whatever and you're attacking me personally. No, the Lord's attacking you personally through this ministry, through his word that I'm preaching to you. And let me tell you something, brother, sister. If an iniquity that you're doing has been discovered by you hearing the preaching of the Word of God. You better get that thing covered. Why? So that you can turn away your captivity. Recover yourself out of that snare of the devil. Get out of there. But look at this here. It says, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Gotta love that one too. A lot of these false prophets, they'll say, the reason that we're suffering is because we've turned from the love of God. And if we just had God's love back and if we just loved other people and uh, what is that? That's a false cause for the problem that they're in. You know what the problem with America is? First and foremost, they've rejected this book. First and foremost, they've come out with all these Vatican versions. The professing Christians have been embracing the Vatican the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. They've been embracing her now for so long. They've been embracing all these unscriptural traditions like Babel buildings and, and all the other stuff. That's the cause of it. And I tick brethren off all the time because I come out against Babel buildings. The modern churches are pagan temples. I'm real sorry to tell you that, brethren. Listen to my study, IFBC, uh, the International, uh, excuse me, the uh, Independent Fundamental Baptist Catholicism is what that's called, you know, Listen to it. I cover it. See, I am not afraid to talk about people's iniquity and to bring out sins that you are part of. And, it, you know, if we were going to get this nation back, and Lord knows we're not going to be doing that, but if we were, you'd have to give up a lot of this stuff. And the false prophets aren't going to tell you that. Next, go to 2 Peter chapter 2. I have three more places to turn to here today in this study, and then we'll be done. 2 Peter chapter 2. Back to your New Testament. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. It says here, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness 
shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Again, another passage I cover a lot in this ministry, because there's so much in that thing that is so very true. False prophets will bring in damnable heresies. They will bring in things and tell you they will justify certain sins that will send you to hell. Okay, keep you from getting saved is what they'll do. And they will speak evil of the way of truth. They will mock King James Bible believers. You know, it's, it, another thing that has always amazed me is how professing Christians of today, these modern evangelicals, can come down on fundamentalists. And, you know, I, I look at what the fundamentals of the faith are, you know, the, the deity of Christ, the virgin birth, the, the blood atonement, you know, all these different things, the miracles and things. And they're like, I reject the fundamentals, but I'm a Christian. The fundamentals are the basics of Scripture. If you're not a fundamentalist, you are lost. You're calling whole portions of God's Word a lie. Saying, it's, oh, it's just fairy tale, you know, but I believe in the, you know, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. I just reject the other parts of the Word of God that I don't like. Uh, no, you're lost. If you're not a fundamentalist, you are lost. That little clip there probably now is going to be showing up some other video or something like that. <laughs> if you're not a fundamentalist, you are lost. I've been featured on this uh, modern evangelical, I thought it was an atheist website at first, uh, um, Stuff Fundies Like, I think it's called. I've been featured on there a couple times, you know, saying I'm some kind of radical fundy, you know, fundamentalist and and uh, whatever. It's like a bunch of lost little... They are. They might not be professing atheists, but they are practicing atheists. Incredible. But turn next to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. It says here, Believe, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth not or confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereby ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Now the reason I put emphasis on is come in the flesh, is because the NIV and many new versions, many of these Vatican versions, will change is to has. So by that test alone right there, they are proving that they are Antichrist. That they have an Antichrist spirit in them. And of course, you know, if you want to do it a good experiment, take one of these Babel buildings that's King James. They use the King James Bible. It's preached from and it's in the, in the pews and things like that. Take them all out and preach out of an NIV and put NIVs in the pews. And watch what happens. It'll turn into an Antichrist church. Just like, like that. Why? You're bringing in the spirit of Antichrist through the books. It'd be like putting witches' spell books in, in the pews and speaking out of the witches' spell book up front. You know, only a witches' spell book is a lot less dangerous, you know, than a NIV. But look at verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Lost people get along with the world. You know, the saved people, those that are Christ-like, truly Christ-like, the lost people are going, why hear ye him? He's a, he has a devil. You know, he's mad. He's crazy. That guy's nuts. But you see a Christian and the lost world's like, oh, I love that guy. He's, oh, he's, he's a good guy. I like him. Oh, he's a good man. I like that guy over there. He's a good man. What are you dealing with? False convert. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It sounds like there's some judging going on there. If you haven't learned that yet, you know, you probably ought to get a hold of that. <laughs> now we're going to go to Romans chapter 14. This is where we're going to end it. Romans chapter 14. Are there times when we should not judge a brother? We're going to see about that. Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. Let's read this. 
Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Okay, let's stop there for a minute. All right. What's going on there is you have dietary things. Now, I know of some brethren that practice vegetarianism. They don't force it. They don't command to abstain from meats, which is forbidden in First Corinthians or First Timothy chapter four. It talks about verses one through five. There, it talks about the thing of commanding to abstain from meats. That's a doctrine of devils. All right, it's not that. There are some brethren out there that, for whatever reason, they don't eat meat. Now, if I get around that brother, should I condemn them for that? Should I judge them because of their diet? No, you know. There is the thing there of gluttony, you know, certainly gluttony is a sin, but if somebody's just eating something that I'm not in agreement with, but it's not bad, it's not a sin or whatever else, don't judge them. Okay, you have no right to judge brethren that are eating differently than you uh, as long as it's not gluttony or some kind of a sin type of a thing, okay? And if I see somebody who's a vegetarian, a Christian that doesn't eat meat, they just don't like it or whatever else, should I go in there and, and sit down beside him and say, oh, you know, I got to eat my lunch here and open up my lunch box and there's this five pound steak in there or something like that? No, don't do that. And don't come in there and make fun of them and put them down and things like that because they eat herbs, right? And vegetables and things. That's fine. That's not something that you should dispute over. Somebody's diet, as long as it's a healthy diet and whatever else, stay away from it. Don't argue about that, all right? Here's another one. Verses 5 down through uh, 6. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So then the standard is there that you're to be fully persuaded in your, in your own mind. Not a big deal. Why? Verse 6. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he, he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Okay, another big one. And this is all ooh, controversial, and that is the thing of celebration of holidays. There are some of the brethren that are vehemently against Christmas, Easter, things like that. That's fine. Somebody doesn't want to be have anything to do with Christmas and Easter and stuff because there are pagan aspects of those days. That's totally fine. But then, as I've said in, in some of my other studies, and I, I guess it's not even up now because the original Bible Believers Fellowship thing on Sermon Audio was taken down. A whole other story there. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, I say my stand has always been, if you're going to celebrate Christmas and Easter, then remove the pagan elements of it. You say, well, you can't. It's all pagan. It's all pagan. Um, are you aware that all the days of our week are named after pagan Norse gods? Sun day, sun worship. Moon day. Tuesday is a changing of tires day. It's what that originally came from. Woden, the Norse god Odin. He was also called Woden. Woden's day. Thor's day, Thor, the Norse god of, of thunder, Frigg, one of Odin's wives, Frigg's day, and Saturn day. Are you going to rename the days of the week? And of course, you know, most of our months are also named after pagan gods and things like this. You know, you go on that rant there where you ban anything that's pagan, eh, you're going to be kind of not being able to do very much in this life. And again, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole debate here, but the fact is there are good Bible-believing brethren that choose to celebrate Christmas. And they don't do Santa Claus and they don't put up a tree and they don't have to do all the, the other whatever, whatever. Some people do put up a tree. 
and they don't do Santa Claus. Stay away from Santa Claus, okay? And the, the whole materialism and all that other stuff of that holiday, yeah, stay away from that. But the point is, if you use that time to go out and witness to the lost, there are a lot of people, lost people that are open to the gospel at that time, whether or not at other points, you know, throughout the year, they're open to hearing about why Jesus came to the earth. Use that. You know, it used to be in, you could go into stores and you could hear, you know, hymns playing, talking about Jesus coming to the earth. You know, O come all ye faithful, O holy night, you know, all these different songs. Joy to the world, hark the herald angels sing. Those are good songs. Look at the lyrics. It's not singing about Santa Claus or, or some kind of wicked thing. They're good songs. But a lot of the brethren say, I don't want anything to do with it. That's fine. To the Lord, you don't regard that day. But then there are those of us who say, I am going to celebrate it, but remove some of the pagan aspects of it. And to the Lord, we'll regard that day. We'll remember the ultimate gift that he gave to us in the person of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. See, again, these are not issues of diet, issues of people celebrating days. And there are brethren that say birthdays are wrong. You know, those aren't issues that you divide over. All right. That's what's going on here in these verses. Look at verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. You have to think about other people within the body of Christ. You are not the sole Christian that's out there, and everybody has to conform to your standards. That isn't it. All right? There are certain things, and right here, Paul says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I believe it is, where it talks about the head covering for a woman, and he says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. There are certain things I'm not going to rip on a brother or a, excuse me, a, not a brother, but I'm not going to rip on a sister out there in Christ if she's genuinely saved and she's got some kind of a cloth veil or some kind of a thing like the Mennonite or Amish or whatever. If she's saved and she feels that she needs to wear that thing to increase her holiness or something like that and her long hair isn't enough, whatever. I'm not going to rip on them for that. I'm not going to come down on them for that. If you're saved and you're a Christian woman and you feel that you need to wear a head covering, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. If you're saved and you are a vegetarian, I'm not going to judge you. You know, am I a vegetarian? No. You know, I'm not. But if you want to be, help yourself. It means more meat for me. You know, uh, if somebody doesn't want to celebrate Christmas, fine. That's fine. Absolutely fine. But these are three things that are given that you're not to, supposed to judge other brethren on. Don't judge other brethren because they don't agree with you in those areas. All right? You can say what your beliefs are. Sure. That's fine. But, and I'm going to be bringing up another one here in just a little bit that's also very important, but just don't cause your brother to stumble. But look at verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. God will take care of it. If you say, well, Brian, I don't agree. Christians shouldn't be celebrating, you know, the holidays and stuff like that, Christmas and Easter and whatever, and, and things. Well, Easter is, you know, condemned there in the book of Acts. So I don't really mess with Easter because of the fertility thing there and whatever else, eggs and rabbits and whatever. But, you know, the whole point is there, if I'm wrong, then God will judge me. Why? I'm his. I'm his property. See? God will judge. Vengeance belongs to him. Verse 9, For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? Another key verse. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. There are some times that you're convinced that your brother or your sister is doing wrong and you just need to say, well, you know what? We're going to all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I have work to do, so I'm going to go this way. You go that way. All right? Split up. You say, well, that didn't happen in the first century. They were always getting, getting along and they always, you know, agreed in everything. Oh, okay. How about uh, Paul and Barnabas? That the contention was so strong sharp among them that they split up never work together again it happens verse 11 
For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of other Christians to God. Oh, wait, I read that wrong. Um, so then every one of us shall give account of our Facebook friends to God. No, uh, YouTube group, Google group, Google circle. No. Church members. No. Um, it says there, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Keep that thing in mind. It's all going to be sorted out someday. All of it. And if you get around people and you see that they're doing wrong, and it's not some kind of a doctrinal serious thing or whatever else, and it's just, you know, whatever, let God take care of it. And if God doesn't take care of it here on this earth, you know, and just let some kind of fall and whatever else, it'll definitely be answered up there at the judgment seat of Christ. When we get up there and we get through the judgment seat of Christ, we're all going to think the same. Okay? And again, you know, don't fall, fall for this lie. I heard a Baptist preacher say this one time that we're all going to be seated at the feet of Jesus ever learning for all of eternity. Uh, no. <laughs> we're all going to get up there. We're going to have the mind of Christ. Okay, we're going to understand things we will know as even as we are also known. But uh, verse 13, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Again, if you say meat, ugh, yuck, I don't want that, then it's unclean to you. But don't judge me because I'm eating it. If you say holidays are unclean, I don't want them, then don't celebrate the holiday. But don't come down on me for saying, I am going to celebrate Christmas. See? See how that thing works? Verse 15, But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let's say I have a, a friend that's a vegetarian. They're definitely saved, Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing, tracting, witnessing, soul-winning, you know, kind of a Christian. And I'm going to invite him over to eat. Should I, you know, have a, a leg of lamb and a side of beef and, and a whole pig on the spit outside roasting for when they pull up? No, no. Show some respect for them. Say, you know what? Let's make something vegetarian for them. And they come and they say, oh, I didn't know you are a vegetarian. Say, well, brother, I'm not. But I respect you as, as my fellow brother in the Lord. Therefore, we can eat this. Is that so much to ask? See? You know? If you go to somebody's house and you go walking in and they always, oh, they got Christmas lights up and oh, there's a Christmas tree. You don't walk in there and say, pagan bale bush, uh, and start yelling at them and stuff. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. You know, again, you might have you might have those convictions because you've seen the Babylonian context, and, or, or uh, not context, but you know the Babylonian content and whatever else, and the and all the other things that go along with this whole debate of Christmas or not Christmas, and whatever. But you go into some Christian's house that just got saved, and Christmas means a lot to them, and it's very much a family tradition type of a thing, a cultural tradition. Um, you go in there, in there to their place, and you see a Christmas tree, and you start ranting and raving and stuff like this, telling them that they're satanic and whatever else, and go storming out of their house. You know what you're going to do? You're going to offend them and make a stumbling block. And you can hide behind, well, the truth offends and whatever else. But the fact is, you're not supposed to do that according to Scripture. And if they're wrong, and if, they, if they're you know, wrong, God will judge them. Don't worry about it. Verse 15, But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. I think I did read that one already, but go on to verse 16. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. 
For meat, destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, now here's another one, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. If you get invited over to a Christian's house that was a former alcoholic, don't bring a bottle of wine. You say, well, then wine is bad. Wine is evil. Wine is a sin. It'll send you to hell. I didn't say that. There are many people that drink wine and they don't get drunk. Many cultures, many traditions, they drink wine frequently. They drink beer frequently. And it's not about the thing of, of you know, being a tough guy and seeing how drunk you can get or something. It isn't that at all. But if you get into a culture where that is going to offend people, don't drink alcohol. If you're a Christian from another country and you come over to a, a bunch of Christians here in America and you see they're very much against alcohol, abstain from, from some alcohol for a little while. That's all that's going on here. Verse 22, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Okay. If you know something is wrong and you go ahead and you partake of it, you know, hypocritically. And again, I'm, we're not talking about in context here. We're not talking about just saying, well, you know, you're eating herbs and whatever. Okay, I'll do the same thing just to, you know, whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying if you have a serious conviction about a sin, a very serious sin, something that's not in that list there, and you go ahead and you do it, you know, then it's sin. It's wrong. It's not a faith. It's sin. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to weigh out there or uh, judge, in other words. And a lot of that stuff you're just going to have to figure out on your own. You know, that's part of growing up as a Christian. Uh, you're going to go through some experiences. Sometimes you're going to fall flat on your face. Um, sometimes it's good to listen to somebody else being judged. That's why I expose false prophets to preserve you, to protect you from falling into these heresies yourself. Okay. So that's going to be it for this study. We will close here with a word of prayer. And uh, that'll be that. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Again, I thank you, Lord, for your word, for the standards of your word, the fact that we can have perfect judgment in this life because we have a perfect Bible for the English-speaking people. And I know that there are people in other languages, other tongues, that uh, they do have a Bible that's very similar, very close to your perfect word. And, uh, Lord, we can discern things and, and uh, judge uh, in most cases, Lord, and you will show us these things. But, Lord, I just pray that the... Christians out there would not get sidetracked on, on these different issues that, that uh, are really not that important and uh, just are not worth fighting over and dividing over. I just pray, Lord, that you would give all of us discernment in these last days. Uh, just continue to teach us, Lord, and show us truth. And I thank you, Lord, for all the things that you show to myself and my wife. And um, just amazing. Uh, how many things have been hidden from us and, and we have been so deceived in these last days. And Lord, most of all, I do pray for that day that we can go to be with you face to face and, and we won't have to worry about deception anymore. We won't have to worry about what's right, what's wrong. Is, should we do this? Should we do that? Because we'll know, Lord, you'll, you'll tell us. You'll show us clearly. And then we'll all think alike. And a glorious re reunion that will be. So Lord, I just... Pray for all of these things to be fulfilled in, in your time and in, according to your will. And uh, I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, that's it for this study. I wanted to do it outside, but um, can't get over to the property right now. It's just kind of raining. And uh, going to be getting some... Uh, time to go over there and record some sermons and things lord willing here Got a lot of work to do and and as usual <laughs> but uh the uh we even have kind of a little personal joke going my wife and i here uh, we've been talking about the catholics and the jesuits been 
uh, attacking very hard and you say, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, we've been physically attacked by Catholics and Jesuits. You say, what are you, what are you saying? Well, black flies are Jesuits and, and Catholics are mosquitoes. <laughs> Little joke. The Catholics and, or the uh, mosquitoes and black flies are really out right now and, and they're, uh, I imagine they're probably going to get a lot worse as time goes by. Um, I've been in Alaska during the summer months and I know it gets real bad up there. So it's very similar climate wise here in Maine, northeastern Maine. So I know some of you have, have warned about the black flies and mosquitoes and I certainly have been getting to experience some of that. And I do thank the sister out there, by the way, that recommended the um, uh, bug off or something like that. I think it's called. It's uh, essential oils that you can use as a uh, insect repellent. Uh, we did get some. I just arrived the other day, and so we're going to be using that. I'm, I'm certainly into uh, natural health type of things like that that are not chemical based, but uh, you know that are based on essential oils. So thank you very much. Looking forward to trying that. But um, so you know, I call them Catholics and Jesuits, by the way, if you haven't figured that out, because Catholics and Jesuits believe in drinking blood. So black flies and mosquitoes also drink blood. So just a little joke there. But uh, uh, again, some interesting studies coming up here. I don't want to give a whole lot away, but um, you know, let me explain something. I know that some of you have requested sermons, and you know, if you're getting frustrated thinking, "Well, he's never going to talk about this," well, understand that a lot of times my studies are overlapping. So, you know, I've been wanting to do a a answer to this thing of judging and exposing false prophets. I've been wanting to do that now for a long time. And it just kind of gets put on the back burner. And as I'm doing research, I'll find some things and I'll kind of, you know, put it into the, you know, into my mind or write down notes or whatever else that I can put it into the study. So some of your suggestions, I do actually have those. I'm working and I'm, I'm laying up information for that. And I get to a certain point and I say, okay, I have this study ready or I have that study ready. I mean, I, I might have 10, 15, 20 different subjects going at one time that I'm getting online, finding research for this one day and finding research for that and whatever. So, uh, again, there's a whole lot of stuff that, that uh, I have coming up here. And, um, you know, of course, we have the continuous thing of working on the ministry headquarters here. I mean, this, this place, when we bought it, it was, you know, halfway through a restoration project meaning walls are torn out, um, floors are ripped up. I mean, we, we, when we bought this place, they had taken the light switches and the socket wall covers. All the light bulbs were taken out. I mean, they got, you know, lights hanging from the ceiling by two wires, you know. So it's, it's, it's been a very, very big uh, ordeal getting things back together here. So um, that, and then we also have the property, the land where we're going to be moving everything over there, you know, and stuff. So it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. And like I said, there's a lot of studies that are, the research is being done right now. And then the study comes out later. So uh, please don't be frustrated with me if, if I haven't gotten around to answering your question yet. That is my calling. That is why I'm here because I want to answer and talk about those controversial subjects that nobody else will touch. Um, the Lord's given me that ability to not really, um, you know, I, I can't say I don't care when other people are attacking me and things, but it's, uh, it's not going to stop me. You know, I just, um, I'm just going to keep coming out. I guess I'm too dumb to quit, you know? So uh, I think that's going to be it. Um, just, uh, keep praying for the ministry. Thank you again to everybody that donates to the ministry. We certainly couldn't do it without the donations, uh, just really, really, really means a lot. So please keep us in your prayers, and we will see you next week.